getting into the week 17 lineup builder video here for you guys touching on the fades stacks some values and core plays that we're going to implement into the lineup builder i didn't do a specific stacking or fade video because i didn't feel like we needed to do that this week i felt like it would have just been wasting your guys's time so i'm just going to touch on that on the top of this video to see if we can apply any of that to the stacking video to the lineup builder video if we can't i won't apply that if we can i will apply it so if you guys enjoy the coverage make sure to give a like and subscribe let's get into it right now all right so looking at the stacking report just trying to see if there's any stacks in particular that we want to go out of our way to use i mean not really so far like not really let's just go ahead and look at best value stack so I, it's going to be mike white at quarterback you could potentially do something like that if you want to I, I don't particularly love that and there's not really a stack that we need to be going out of our way to roster this week so let's go ahead and look at the ownership of leverage now so here are the top players that are going to be under owned on the main slate you know i don't really love baker mayfield probably not going to be rostering him uh travis kelsey i would agree with he's going to be low owned always is a little bit under owned always someone that ranks out as the best leverage play on the slate so no no shock there uh Austin Eckler is a play that I do like, um, but the, the problem with Austin Eckler is there's no real reason to go out of your way to play him unless you're trying to gain some leverage on the field. Uh, Tyreek Kill, I'm fine with that. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, I'd be fine jumping on a little bit more given his low ownership. Carson Wentz to me is a little bit interesting. Um, low price tag for him someone that we know can get uh hot i guess throwing the football probably going to get sacked a few times but the potential for him to go off is kind of there patrick mahomes going to be under owned going against denver I, I think the biggest one would be saquon barkley is going to be a little bit under owned he gets a great matchup and he'd be someone that i want to go out of my way to target as well as chris godwin you guys already know my feelings on chris godwin this is a great chance to gain some leverage on the field by probably being <laughs> triple the projected ownership of him just great spot safe play uh someone i expect to have a, a great game and then as always for the lineup builder i want to be going on my way to roster players that i think are going to be strong cash plays and core plays one player that i want to add in there for you guys is going to be brian robinson with antonio gibson out he is someone that we just need to be going out of our way to roster currently I have him projected to get 13 dk points which given the matchup with houston you know a defense that gives up so many points we could easily see that number be you know double that projection so also someone i want to be on so let's go ahead and get into the lineup builder so step one is always bumping up the ownerships or the projected fantasy points of the players i want to be on more so let's go ahead and do that first and this we're doing this just to ensure that they are in the builds uh, a majority of the time the builds that we want them to be in it's just going to tell the lineup optimizer these are the players i want to be on and so who am i doing that for cmc saquon gets a great matchup we're going to do that for james connor keenan allen for sure we're bumping that way up uh Rondre Stevenson, a decent amount, but also Damien Harris is back and healthy. Okay, so we might see Damien Harris eat into Stevenson's workload slightly. So I might keep this the same, maybe only ninth, because I, I do see the potential in which it was looking like Stevenson should be a lock and load. And now I can see the potential where he's just a strong GPP only play. So Travis Etienne going to be a standout running back play as well. One of those players I'm trying to go out of my way to roster. And then also we are going to be looking at Chris Goblin, going to bump up his projection to about 17. Just trying to ensure that I'm getting a lot of lineups with Chris Goblin and Keenan Allen because they are both safe plays and both players that have have extreme upside cam makers is another one of those players that you know i feel like his projection is good but let's go ahead and bump it up to like 18 maybe uh but what i'm going to do is i'm going to cap the exposure to him to about 15 percent because i don't want him to be one of my highest owned players on the slate i do want pieces of him because he is playing about 75 percent of the snaps and has looked good thus far this uh the, the last end of the season the last three weeks so i might maybe do a situation where i do a if then statement like if a roster includes aaron jones do not include aj Dillon, because i might want a little bit of one of them because they they do get a decent matchup going against minnesota it wouldn't be shocking to see one of them go off christian watson's a play that i love as well um uh, really just should be able to go off against the vikings if he is out we are looking at romeo dobbs okay and that is something that at the end of the or come sunday morning if we need to regenerate the lineups we can go ahead and just rebuild them with dobbs in there instead of christian watson that's a very nice feature of the lineup build so brian robinson yeah i'm gonna bump this up a decent amount probably to around uh 17 just because i want to tell the lineup optimizer that you know with that injury news i want more of brian robinson i want him in a decent amount of my builds okay i wouldn't probably not mind him being like the third highest stone running back that i have on the slate because i think he has that much upside another player that i want to tell the lineup optimizer i want more of is gonna be greg dorch um already has a decent projection already a decent value play 
Now, let's go ahead and bump this up to 13 and maybe do max exposure about 35%. Don't want to go too crazy with it, but I do want to tell the lineup optimizer that I think he's going to be a strong play. And then there was another running back that I thought could have some upside kind of giving game script that's gonna be chase Edmonds, not someone we're going crazy with and not someone we want too much exposure to but he is someone that i could see a path into which he has a decent day just catching some dump offs look good uh latavius murray he's just another guy at this age of his career so uh i could see a path into which chase Edmonds gets more work in this game then i'm just gonna go ahead and filter down by position so i can see the running or the receivers that i want to be on a little bit more so Cortland sudden was a play that i like let's just bump him up a little bit just should be a safe play but maybe like 25 uh alan lazard gonna be a strong play this week against minnesota and then we are getting just proper projections for a lot of these really good kind of or really decent value plays like we don't really have to change them too much because they should be getting pulled in already so yeah i'm okay with this so let's go ahead and do tight end real quick click the drop down do tight end and remember there were a couple of value tight end plays that I really liked. Jelani Woods is one of them. And Tyler Higby currently questionable. If he were to sit, we'd be looking at Bryson Hopkins. Okay, he is looking like he could be a decent value play. So Jelani Woods is going to bump this up to, let's just say, eight. Okay, maybe nine, just to ensure that we're telling it. We we want him in the builds. And then Bryson Hopkins, let's bump this up to seven as well. I'm actually going to go out and click Tyler Higby off. Basically saying it, I, I, think, I think Hopkins is going to be the guy. Okay, so from there, I'm good with everything else. Uh, let's do one other change here. Go to settings, flex and eligible, and let's run the first one. Tight end, flex and eligible, as always. And let's just do max exposure about 40. Generate. All right, so it likes Mike White way too much. I don't want that much Mike White. The quarterbacks I want to be on the most are going to be Jared Goff and Justin Fields. So I might have to bump up their uh, projections a little bit as well. So yeah, definitely need to do that. And so let's go ahead and look at the, the players that the lineup builder was pulling in too much of. You know, Patrick Mahomes, I'm actually fine with that. Uh, Mike White, definitely like 10%. Uh, does get a good matchup against Seattle. Uh, wouldn't mind that in a stack. Like, I'm fine with that. We do see that we are getting the proper exposure to the running backs that we want. Maybe except for Leonard Fournette. Let's, let's really cap that at like 12 and maybe even less than that, like seven. I don't want to be on Leonard Fournette. Let's just match the projected ownership of 6.5 Zonovan Knight I want to be under owned on him I don't really love that and then from there for the most part I'm pretty good with this the one thing I'm seeing is that we are not getting any of Jelani Wood or Bryson Hopkins so we would have to bump up their projections as well so I'm going to search Jared Goff because I do want more Jared Goff let's bump up his projection to about 24 uh, you know I'm fine with that I'm fine if if we're on him a ton okay so let's just go ahead and generate this again uh, make sure that it is pulling in the proper players that we want to be on. All right, so click on players. Let's just check it out. Make sure we're getting the proper exposure to players we want. Jared Goff is now being pulled in there a lot. Evan Ingram, probably too much of him and probably too much of Brennan Cooks. Uh, maybe Jacoby Myers as well. Like, I'm fine with those plays as a whole. Maybe we just cap that to about 20%. I mean, obviously don't want to go too far off the board from what the data is telling us. At the same time, I, I do want it to be doing what I'm telling it to do as well, okay? I will say my biggest mistakes, my biggest regrets in DFS this season have been not trusting the lineup optimizer more. So once again, just going to do that same step, um, maybe capping the exposures of some players. Like Swift, I don't want that much of. And then like Jacoby Myers, I'm fine with 25. Let's go 20 for Brandon Cooks. Yeah, Evan Ingram, I, I also am fine with, especially at that price tag. I just, I like paying down at tight end. So that's what I wanted to do. Or I want to pay up for Travis Kelsey. That's pretty much it, okay? I'm fine with a couple of the decent ones, but for the most part, pay down at tight end and that's the route I want to go. One other thing I'm going to do real quickly as well. Actually, it already is pulling the 49ers defense in a decent amount. This is finally the week in which I think I might pay up a little bit for a defense and that would be the Niners. Okay. I'm fine with that. So I think we got it pretty good. Let's go ahead and do some settings. Tell it some other stuff that we wanted to do. Let's start with position stacks. And if you guys remember at the beginning of the video, I showed you guys the stack and report. There wasn't really any specific stacks. It was telling us to make, which does make this slate unique in the sense that we don't really have to target a specific game. Although I like Chicago and Detroit, but there's not like a, a, a great stack to go about. Like we don't have to do that. That's why I didn't put out a stacking video this week because it'd been a waste of time for you guys. So, and I don't like to do that. So like maybe we just stack quarterback and receiver together from the same team. And maybe we just do Detroit. <laughs> you know, there's not that much. Maybe Rogers going against Minnesota, although he hasn't exactly lit it up, you know, this season, that, that'd be a worry. It's very difficult to like love this week. And really that's it. I, yeah, I will do Green Bay, I guess. Could do KC, but I, I don't really want to do that. Maybe Wilson. No, probably not. Maybe Mike White. I could see that. I, 
I just feel like it'd be dumb to like go crazy with this. Okay. Rogers and the Packers get a great matchup on the slate. Detroit gets a great matchup on the slate and that's what I'm chasing. So we'll save that. Okay. And I'm also going to restrict uh DST against quarterback and running back. Okay. Opposing team. Okay. I'm fine with that team stacks. Like I said, not really a specific uh, game that we need to go out of our way to stack like in previous weeks. Okay. I think I'm going to leave that. And then honestly, player groups, I don't know if we need to do a player group either. Okay. This is a very weird slate this week in which we don't have to get too cute with it. Let the lineup optimizer do what it's, it's supposed to do. And maybe this is a slate in which you could potentially do 50 lineups where you're chasing ownership and 50 lineups where you're fading ownership. And then the last 50, it doesn't matter. You could potentially do that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and run 20 real quick. And then we're going to do 150. And then we should be pretty good, I would assume. And I don't know, did you guys, uh, I, I wonder if some people did this last week because I know I had some fun lineups going. Um, and that's where being like an individual content creator, just one person doing it is a little bit annoying because I know if there was four other people really just going ham on that same advice, like someone would have taken down a P. I, I, like it was just that close. So many players went off and we were on like the right line of path. So that's kind of the pain part is that like, let's just say if I was a big company and let's, I don't know how many different content uh, people they have on their teams, five people, all 150 max entering, going off of the same advice. And then, you know, typically speaking, they have a bigger reach than two. And maybe let's just say 10% of their audience does that. And this video gets about, I don't know, a thousand views each week. And so let's just say a hundred people were max entering based off of that advice last week. It's like, come on, like definitely would have had someone take down a GPP, which that's kind of the annoying part is giving out GPP winning advice and just not having people take it each and every week, which I get. I'm not saying I don't get that. It's just, it's frustrating at, at some points because I want to see those green screens come in, guys. That's why I'm doing this stuff to help you guys. But I'm not saying like, oh, take my word uh, by the gospel. It's just when the big weeks happen, when the awesome content weeks happen, that's, it's like, oh man, that's unfortunate. You know, you guys get it. Okay, so looking at it, have this pretty good, probably a little bit too much Greg Dortch, um, probably a little bit too much Miles Sanders as well. Maybe not enough Cortland Sutton, probably not enough uh, Chris Godwin, and maybe maybe we do change Cam Akers a little bit there as well. All right, so I was actually getting too much exposure to both Jared Goff and Aaron Rodgers. So what I ended up doing, is I, I just told the optimizer that instead of going for a specific team, and that that's kind of the issue is that I don't want to be targeting a specific team necessarily, maybe Jared Goff, but I don't want to go too crazy with it. So I just switched it out to quarterback and receiver stacking together because obviously we we want to do that. So we're going to save this. Now we're going to run it. That should be good. All right. So the optimizer was done running and I feel pretty good about what we're getting here. So maybe a little bit too much Patriots defense, but I'm fine with that. Uh, Justin Fields, 35%. And then I did cap Jared Goff's to 25% and we're getting that. So I feel pretty good about that. I mean, I'm curious. I do want to see my team exposure. So we are getting some exposure to the teams we'd probably want to be on as is. So I'm good with that. I'm happy with that. And then let's just look at games as well. Which games are we getting pieces of? That's interesting. Atlanta and Arizona. Now, I probably... I probably want to be more Green Bay, Minnesota, Detroit, Chicago. So I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. That's pretty good there. Let's just look at what we're pulling in there. The minimum salary, that's pretty good. 800 left over. So that lineup's probably unique. Uh, the max owned that I have is 100%, which is not bad. Uh, min 54, that's okay. And we're looking pretty good as a whole. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. The lineups for this, I mean, obviously we'll change a little bit come Sunday, but I'm, I'm good with this. This is looking good again. So hopefully you guys are able to use some of the information that I had available for you in this video and apply that to your own lineups come Sunday. If you guys enjoy the coverage, make sure to give a like and subscribe as well. I do appreciate that. Let's have a good slate. And as always, guys, let's keep cashing.